Okay, so now I'm going to do question number 11 from the uh, new M1 textbook for International A-Level, Mechanics 1. Um, it's chapter 4, uh, page 76, the chapter for review, uh, question number 11. Um, a train of mass 2,500 kilograms pushes a carriage of mass 1,100 kilograms along a straight horizontal track. The engine is connected to a carriage to the carriage by a shunt, which is parallel to the direction of motion of the coupling. So a shunt is like what connects the carriage and the you know the carriages together in a train. Okay, the different carriages and the train and the the, the engine and the carriages and so it's what connects them together. You could you could treat it like a rod, something that doesn't bend or buckle. It's like a, you know where the tension is is transmitted through. Um, the rod. Okay, so that's that's how you could treat it, I guess. Um, <clears throat> the horizontal resistance to motion of the train and the carriage have magnitudes r newtons and 500 newtons, respectively. The engine of the train produces a constant horizontal driving force of magnitude 8,000 newtons that causes the train and carriage to accelerate at 1.7 meters per second squared. Okay, so the important thing here that I can see um, is that it says. The carriage is being pushed, not pulled. Pushes a carriage. The train pushes the carriage. So that's that's the, the important phrase here. I think that will make this slightly different than a normal question. Okay, so let's just say you have your, your train now. Your train is going to be over here. That's the engine. And here's a carriage. The carriage is actually now in front of the train. It's being pushed by, pushed by the train. And this is the, the rod. Okay, this is the rod, okay, which is basically going to trans transmit the force. I'll, I, what I'll do is, I, although in a, in a train it's not really that long, I'm going to draw this longer as if it's like a, a, a rod, just so that we can see the forces on it better. But basically now, what you can see from here is there's going to be a force. Um, first of all, we call this the train. Okay, this is the train here. Okay, so that there's going to be a driving force. The driving force is going that way. Okay, that's the driving force of the train, which is 8,000 newtons. You have the resistance to the motion of the train, R and 500 respectively. So for the train this way, make it straight, this way, and for the carriage this way. Okay, so it's R for the train and 500 newtons for the carriage, the resistance to motion. So this, this is in this direction, and these are in that direction. Okay, so it's being pushed. Now, what's happened when it's being pushed, okay, is the following. These two are being kept apart by this rod, so that the arrows are pointing in this direction. This is the tension in the coupling, or the rod, or the, or what they call it, the shunt, okay? It's like when this pushes forwards, this rod is keeping them apart, so the tension is acting in this direction like this. Okay, and we have also this. It's, it's this is a mass 2,500, 2,500 kilograms, and this is a mass 1,100 kilograms. Okay, so the acceleration is in this direction. Okay, and that's 1.75 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's now find what R is. So we're going to take take the whole system as one whole thing, in which case it's like you've got one big block. You can consider it as one whole big block because we're only considering the whole thing so we don't have to worry about those tensions in the coupling. So we'll consider the whole total mass is 3,600 kilograms. Okay. The total resistance is 500 plus R and the driving force is 800 8000 newton 8000 newton sorry 8000 newtons and the acceleration is 1.75 meters per second squared so we can solve an equation here we if we take this as positive resolving the forces we have 8000 is equal or sorry not equal it's f equals ma so 8000 that's in that direction minus 500 plus r put that in a bracket so that you don't the R is going to be negative when you subtract it, is equal to the mass, the total mass, which is 3,600 times acceleration, which is 1.75 
meters per second squared. So that will give us, hopefully when we work out R, it should be 1200 newtons. Let's see if that works. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to have 3000, whoops, is it gone? 3600 times 1.75. That gives us 6,300. So you got 6,300. Whoops, change the color. How did that happen? Okay, so 6,300. And here you have 8,000 minus 500, which is going to be 7,500 minus R. So R will be 7,500 minus 6,300, which does give you 1,200. Newtons, which is exactly what we had to show. Okay, so that's fine. Now, part B says find the magnitude of the compression in the shunt. So we've got to find the value of T here. So now this is where we can consider one of them or the other separately. So the one that has less forces acting on it is the carriage here. So let's consider the carriage. So considering ca the carriage. So let's just move this down. So considering the carriage, I think I need to make more space. Okay, so we're going to consider just the carriage on its own. So if we consider the carriage on its own, if we just look at the diagram from there, you've got the, the following forces acting on. In fact, what I'll do is this. I'll just do this to make it a bit easier. I will just take... No, not that. Take it from here. Okay, if I take just that and paste it down here, that just gives what we need okay make it small of course okay so basically we're just considering the carriage okay consider the carriage alone okay so if you look at the forces acting on this carriage okay you've got basically the tension that's pushing it this way from the rod and you have got this resistance to the motion and that's, that's the resultant force. So you've got T, it's going in this direction, so we're going to take this as positive. T minus 500 is equal to M times A, which is 1100 times 1.75. So T is going to be 1100 times 1.75 plus 500. Okay, so that will be the tension. So you have 1.75 times 1100 plus 500. And that gives us 2425, 2,425 newtons. That's the tension in uh, or the compression in the in the shunt, the tension or the compression. And there's basically this force that's pushing that way. Compression because it's pushing outwards. Okay, now. Okay, now for part C. It says, given that the resistances to motion are unchanged, find the magnitude of the thrust in the shunt. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. Okay, so the train must stop at the next station. So the driver reduces the force produced by the engine to zero. So now it's a different situation from above. <clears throat> the train must stop at the next station. So the driver reduces the force produced by the engine to zero and also applies the brakes. The brakes produce a force on the train of magnitude 2000 newtons causing the engine and carriage to decelerate Given that the resistances to motion are unchanged, find the magnitude of the thrust in the shunt. Okay, so now, um, remember here, the train is before the carriage. Okay, the train is in front of, is like here, and it's, in the initial situation, it was pushing the carriage forward. Okay, now what's happened is, okay, they're connected by um, a shunt. It's like a, you can take, you can take it like a, um, you know, like a rod towing rod you can imagine it acts in the same way as a, a towing rod okay as I mentioned before so this is your train and this is your carriage okay so now there's no driving force the the, the force has been um, the, the force produced by the engine has gone to zero but there's a braking force which is going to act in the opposite direction to which it's moving. Now, if we put the train here in the carriage here, of course, it's moving in this direction. That's the way it's moving, okay? Um, once the brake is, when you start applying the brakes, that's the way it's going to be moving. So, 
that's basically uh, the force of the brake is going to be acting in the opposite direction. It's going to act in this direction over here. Okay, so this is how it's going to act, the, the braking force, which is <coughs> 2,000 newtons. Okay, that's the braking force. And what's also going to happen is you've got to have um, the same resistances to motion as before. So the resistance to motion before was um, R for the train, which we found to be 2,425. No, no, that was the tension. R was 1,200. In fact, it tells us that in the question. It's asking us to show that it's 1,200, which we did. So we already know that from the question above. And also 500 for the, uh, for the carriage. Okay, so it's 1,200 and 500. We'll get rid of that. So you've also got resistance to motion acting on the train and on the carriage. I'll just draw them over there. So for the train, it's 1,200 newtons. And for the carriage, it's 500 newtons. Okay. Um, resistance to motion unchanged. Let's see if there's any other resistances to motion. That's all there is. That's all there was. Okay, so now there's going to be now a deceleration. Okay, so it's moving this way. It's going to be negative acceleration. Okay, and um, so it's the, the acceleration, of course, has changed from before. So let's look at the look at the whole system, the system as a whole. Okay, ignoring the compression in inside first to find the acceleration. What we want to do is find the deceleration first, and then we can use that to find the tension in the or the thrust in the in the shunt. So, if we're looking at the whole system, <coughs> what we can see is um, first of all we know that the masses of both of these are 2,500 and 1,100. So 2,500. So this is 2,500 kilograms, and this is 1,100 kilograms. That's the, the mass of both of them. So if we take the resultant force, now the only forces acting now are in the opposite direction to the movement, which is going to be all of these added together. So it's going to be negative, well that's 3,200 uh, plus 500, that's 3,700. I've added together all the forces here. That's the resultant force, and that's equal to the mass, which is 3,600 times the acceleration. So therefore, the acceleration is going to be negative 3,700 over 3,600. Okay, so that will give you your, your acceleration. Okay, negative 37 over 36. Okay, I can leave it like that even. Negative 37 over 36 meters per second squared. I can <coughs> write, I'll leave it like that for now. In the end, we'll round to three, except for final answer for everything. Okay, so that's looking at the system okay as a whole now let's look at the system in parts let's look at we want to find the magnitude of the thrust in the shunt so the, basically what's happening here in this case the train is 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 basically slowing down okay the whole system so this thing is trying to carry on as it would normally do so the bar is now pulling it back all right and as this this is pushing it away from hitting the train. So this is the, the direction of the of the tensions now. Okay, or we, we, they will call them the thrust. This is the thrust in the carriage because this is slowing down. So it's going to be pulling this back towards itself. Okay, it's not moving, it's moving in this direction. It's pushing. Okay, so you can imagine it's it was pushing now. What's happened is it stopped pushing and the brake is applied. So this thing is slowing down. This is going to try and slow this down. How is it going to slow that down? By pulling it in this way. Now if this thing is if this thing is, um, you know, this thing will also be pulling on the train that way. So that's why you've got a tension or your thrust acting in that direction. That's how the thrust would act in this situation. Okay. <clears throat> it's because the train is pushing initially. It's pushing the carriage, it's not pulling the carriage initially. So now it's actually um, basically trying to pull the carriage from continuing. That's what it's trying to do. All right. So <clears throat> it's a different situation if that was in front of the carriage. This way, when you apply the brakes, it, the carriage is trying to go into the train and then the thrust will be outwards because it's trying to stop the carriage from hitting the train. That's what the, the rod will, is going to do. All right, so now that's acceleration uh, in the system now. It's acting in this direction. It's a deceleration. And now let's look at, uh, I think the carriage is easier to look at. Why is the carriage easier to look at? Because there's less forces acting on it. You don't have this force here. All right, so if we, if we look at the carriage, just draw it by hand. You've got your carriage. 
you've got 500 newtons resistance acting in this direction okay you've got your tension acting in that direction and you've got your mass of 1000 kilograms okay oh sorry 1100 kilograms let's get rid of that zero 1100 kilograms is your mass so we can say the resultant force is basically you're going to have your tension and that acting in that direction so minus t minus 500 is equal to and you're going to have mass times acceleration so it's 1100 times minus 37 over 36 okay so basically what you're going to ha end up having is let's work out what that is first you're going to have uh, 1100 times 37 over 36 okay i'll leave it in this form this is going to be a negative where's it going 10175 over 9 10175 over 9 okay and you're going to have minus t minus 500 so basically what I'll do is I will add T to both sides and I will take this from both, I'll add this to both sides. So I end up with one, zero, one, seven, five over nine minus 500. So if I take away 500 from this, so take away 500 from this. Okay. And that will be my answer. T equals five, six, seven, five over nine, five, six, Seven five divided by nine. Okay, which gives you six hundred and thirty. Six hundred thirty-one newtons. That's to three SF. Okay. Oops, one calculator. Six hundred thirty-one. That's right. And there's the answer for part C. Okay, now the answer in the back of the book actually says uh, 630 newtons and it says to 2 SF for some reason if you look at the back of the book. However, if you look at the question itself, it says give your answers to 3 SF. Okay, so what we, what we wrote down here is absolutely perfectly correct. Okay, so even though, in, even though it says give your answers to 3 SF here, in the back of the book they've put down 630 Newtons, and then they wrote down R in brackets after it 2SF, which actually is not doing what the question asks. So this is fine as your answer. Okay? Thank you for watching.